April 11th, the first work day of the week, the day that we shall call the day of the sun, or Sunday. It's a work day, not a religious holiday. Okay, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, our daily walk with Jesus, day 100 of the year 2010. Here we're going to find that Jesus teaches about prayer. I suggest you write this down, chapter and verse, brethren, so that you can go study it at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down in the corner to start and stop this video so you can find the places in your own Bible as you wish. Okay, brethren, Jesus teaches about prayer. We're going to start with Matthew. Chapter 6, nine, verses 9 through 15. Pray along these lines. Our Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. We ask that your kingdom will come now. May your will be done here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Give us our food again today, as usual, and forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So be it, or amen. Your heavenly Father will forgive you if you forgive those who sin against you. But if you refuse to forgive them, he will not forgive you. This is often called the Lord's Prayer because Jesus gave it to his disciples. It should be a pattern for our prayers. Not something to repeat over and over. Forgiveness. Jesus gives us a startling warning about forgiveness. We, if, that word if, used 1,592 times in your Bible. If we refuse to forgive others, God will also refuse to forgive us. Why? Because when we do not forgive others, we are denying our common ground as sinners in need of God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness of sin is not the direct result of our forgiving others, but it is based on our realizing that forgiveness means you can see that in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 it means it is easy to ask God for forgiveness but it is difficult to grant it to others whenever we ask God to forgive us for sin we should ask ourselves have I forgiven the people who have wronged me our daily need for prayer. I pray to you, O oh Lord, to give me a ready sympathy with others that I may look at things from their standpoint and see myself as they see me. Faith is a gift that grows as we use it, and you hold fast to my name. I have trusted in thy mercy my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dwelt bountifully with me. Your daily walk on that narrow path will bring you eternal life with the Father and his Son. The Lord Almighty is my light. Psalms chapter 27 and verse 1 reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? <clears throat> the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Pardon me. <coughs> <coughs> Got an early morning frog. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in this tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Brethren, are you using this as a Lord's Sabbath, this first day of the week? 
then you're making void the Word of God. The Word of God says it's the seventh day. Ask your minister, ask yourself, why do I go to church to honor Christ on this day? Why? Where does the Bible tell you to do that? No place will you find it. No place. There's eight times in the New Testament where it says the first day of the week. Open up your Bible. Look at that where it says day on them. It's in italics. It wasn't in the original Greek. That day was there. They say so that you can fully more understand what it's saying. No, it's changing the worship from our Lord to Baal. Look it up. It's, they even call it the day of the sun, Sunday. Go into Ezekiel chapter 8. And I, I'm not sure, but I think it's about verse 13, 14, where you see that 20 and 4 priests went outside the temple and looked at the rising sun. They worshipped this rising sun. Well, you take a look and read it. I'm not saying this. You go ahead and read it in there. Ezekiel chapter 8. He says this is a big abomination to him. One of the bigger abominations to be following, worshiping the Son instead of the Father who is in heaven. Look it up. Don't believe me? Believe your Bible. Well, brethren, do you want to change? Then get down on your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. <laughs> Still have that frog. For following the tradition of men, tell him to ask the Father to show you the way on that narrow path that goes to salvation. And that way is following all his commandments. Do not add to or take away. If you truly want to change in your heart, the Father will grant you the wisdom to understand the letter that he sent you. And that is in your Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.